Right, a break statement um, consists of break followed by an optional identifier. And that identifier refers to um, a label, if it's, if it's there, that is. And um, uh, if it's followed by a label like that, um, it must refer to a statement which contains the break itself. So um, that statement could be a for statement, or it could be a block, or a while statement, or even, and I've never actually seen this, it could even be an if statement. Now, um, uh, when this break thing is executed, what happens is the um, it uh, causes the labeled statement, the one that's been referred to by this, to um, uh, complete abruptly and um, control to transfer to the statement that follows the labeled statement. And um, having said that, um, I will have to add a bit more to that when we discuss exception handling. Now, um, a break with no label at all, because this thing's optional, remember, uh, uh, must occur within um, either a switch statement, which I'll we'll come to later, um, a while, do, or a for statement. In other words, it can't be an if statement. And it causes the immediate, immediately enclosing uh, switch while do or for to complete abruptly and control to transfer to the statement following. Uh, with the usual remark that um, that will have to be statement uh, about continuing will have to be modified slightly when we discuss exception handling. So this is something that you can do. For example, if you label this if statement and you put a break like that in um, and just saying if true break x so that will always break and this will never be printed at all and uh, when it hits that it will continue at that point after this after this uh, right curly bracket and um, if we look at something like this here's another thing that you know I'd like you to see um, is a, a block that's been labelled, a block X and if it says break X there what happens is of course is that um, it uh, goes to the immediately following immediate statement following that uh, right curly bracket there so of course it has absolutely no effect on the other hand if that had no label at all then it doesn't matter what that is if, that, if there's no label following that break then um, uh, the program will continue once it hits that at um, whatever follows that right curly bracket because it would jump out of that for loop. Uh, well the continue statement is um, a bit like the uh, break statement, it's followed by an identifier which is optional and um, if it's followed by um, an identifier, that identifier refers to a label and the label has to belong to a while do or a for statement, all of which, if you recall, are types of loop, uh, which must contain the continue. And um, the continue causes the um, um, the labelled while do or for statement to complete its current iteration abruptly and to start the next iteration. Um, now, when it comes to discussing um, exception handling, we have to add a little bit more to that. Right, if there's um, if there's no label, because the label up there is uh, optional, um, then um, it must occur within a while do or a for statement, just as before. Um, but it causes the immediately enclosing while do or for statement to complete its current iteration abruptly and to start the next. And again, uh, uh, when it comes to discussing exception handling, we'll add a bit more to that. So here's an example. Um, we've got a for loop here, and it's labelled with label two, and label one labels a block. And uh, that's why this continue statement here, continue lab one, causes a compiler error uh, because uh, label one labels a block and not a for statement. Uh, label two is okay though, but um, it's not going to do anything if you think about it because this is the end of the for statement so all that happens is it just goes around and starts again which is what it would have done anyway 
at the end of this uh, when it gets to the end of this um, uh, block here of uh, within the for statement. So that uh, does nothing that's pretty pointless. Uh, well, I think this is uh, probably all the cases that you can get for labels. Um, first of all, where can you put them? Well, you can put them anywhere except you can't put them there because uh, you're not allowed to put a label on a variable declaration because that is not a statement. Declarations are not statements. Even though it may look like one. Um, so uh, that's how. If you try and put one there, you get some complaint about it not being a statement. Okay, now if we put uh, a break or continue at this point, uh, the question is choosing all these various um, choices of uh, label and unlabel, whereabouts it jumps to. So if you just do break at this point here, then it will just come out of this for loop and uh, will continue at line 11. If you do break LB1, um, then it comes right out of everything and continues at line 15. For LB2, um, it just jumps out of that while loop. So it'll be down there somewhere, 13. Um, if you do break LB3, you'll get a compiler error. And the reason for that, of course, is that um, labels exist only from the point at which they're declared until the end of the statement they're declared in. So while goes from that down to that because that's where the while ends but uh, this LB3 there uh, that uh, uh, starts there as it were and it ends at the end of this so it ends line 5 so it only lasts for line 4 basically so it doesn't exist as far as uh, at this point here so yeah, that's why you get a compiler error if you put break LB3 in um, let's see break LB4 will uh, just break out of that for loop just as much as LB5 will. And the um, thing about break, of course, is it's very it's much more tolerant than continue. Uh, continue is quite strict, strict at what it will accept, and it accepts loops. Um, so let's have a look. Continue. If you do continue, it will uh, continue at line, go back to line 6 and continue there with the next iteration. So um, uh, I++ does get done, by the way, of course. Um, if you do continue LB2, it will um, go back up to the line 3. If you do continue LB3, then you'll get uh, the same sort of problem because it doesn't exist, basically. It's no longer in scope. If you do continue LB4, however, you get uh, more subtle you get a, an error as well. The reason for that is that uh, continue is very strict. It needs a, a, um, for a loop of some form and it's anything acceptable to it. And um, LB4 is a labeled labeled statement. You see what I mean? So it's not a for loop. Uh, if you do continue LB5, however, that's okay. That will continue it to 6. So that's about it. Um, of course, LB1, I don't know if I mentioned that. LB1, if you do continue LB1, you get an error because that's, that's not a loop. That's just a block. As I say, continues demands that whatever label it jumps to be labeled for statement or while statement or do.